Welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue with the discussion of time value of money and how to apply these tools to help you with your financial planning. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at different types of cash flows and how they relate to your financial plan. For example, when we apply time value of money, we can find the future value. Uh, the term that finance people often use is compounding. So when we are compounding, we are finding the future value. Future value basically means how much an investment or a loan will be worth or the value of the investment or the value of the loan at the end of the horizon. Uh, in contrast, we can find the present value, which the term we use is discounting. When we are discounting cash flow, we are finding the present value, which is the starting value of an investment or the starting value of a loan. We can use, uh, we can evaluate cash flow one at a time. So a single cash flow at a time. Uh, the finance term we use is lump sum. And an example of uh, uh, using time value of money to evaluate a single cash flow, a uh, very common use is adjusting for inflation. So for example, um, you want to find out how much something will cost in the future. So let's say you figure you need to uh, have $60,000 to support your standard of living today. How much will you need in 40 years? Uh, given a certain inflation rate. So that's a very common um, retirement planning problem. Another type of cash flow that we will encounter a lot are called annuities. Annuity is defined as a finite set of cash flow. So the key here is that you know exactly how many payments you'll get and the payment is a fixed payment and is an equal, equal amount. And uh, interest is compounded at the same frequency as payment interval. So for example, if you have um, monthly payment, what that means is at the end of each month, after the payment is made, a, the interest will be recalculated at the end of each month. So it's also compounded monthly. So a new balance will be um, updated based on your payment and the accumulated interest. Annuities are particularly common in consumer finance, such as auto loans, home mortgages. There are many uh, examples of annuities being used in financial planning and financial products. Another reason to learn about annuities is that making the assumption of uh, equal fixed amount makes planning easier. So for example, uh, you want to know how much you have to save per month to reach your financial goal. Uh, assuming that you're saving the same amount in the planning stage makes it a lot easier. Uh, of course, when, so this is similar, uh, we'll talk about budgeting in, in the near future. Uh, but as you can see, if you plan a different amount, it's a lot harder uh, to go into that level of details. But if you try to figure out approximately how much do you need per month and assume that to be a fixed amount, that makes planning a lot easier. So let's take a look a little bit more into annuities. There are two main types of annuities. If the payment happens at the end of each period, it is called an ordinary annuity uh, because this is the most common type that's called ordinary unless it's qualified, meaning if there's just the word annuity, we can assume this to be ordinary. So the word ordinary sometimes is omitted. Um, an example, of ordinary annuity is a car loan or a mortgage payment. All those are due at the end of each month. So when you go to buy a car, uh, after you sign the paper, you, d you pay your down payment, but you don't start your car payment until the end of the month. In contrast, there are some annuities that the payment occur at the beginning of the period, and those are called annuity due. So if that happens, you definitely, uh, the word annuity due is will not be omitted. So when you see the word annuity due, you know that payment occurs at the beginning. An example of that is rent payment. So when you uh, sign a lease, you put down your first month's rent. So the first month's rent is paid at the time of the lease signing, uh, in contrast to a mortgage or a car payment. There's a special type of annuity that lasts forever, and they're called perpetuity. 
Uh, this is not very common in consumer finance, but as your planning um, extends in the future, you may encounter uh, perpetuity. An example is an endowment. So if someone, let's say, want to endow a scholarship, uh, typically the endowment doesn't have an end date. And so that means the scholarship will continue forever. And that is an example of a perpetuity. Now in real life, cash flows don't always occur at fixed interval at equal amount. So those are just called broadly uneven cash flows. So they are just uneven, meaning they're different, they're different amount at different time interval. This is realistic. However, they're not very really useful for planning purposes. However, they're very useful when you're trying to verify the performance of your investment, or you want to verify if you make additional payment on your loan, how, um, how do the, whether or not the new balance take into account your unscheduled payments. So this is a tool that you may find useful in some circumstances. We'll be using spreadsheet to compute the time value of money um, concept that we have just introduced. Um, so when you use a spreadsheet, what we'll use is functions. Uh, spreadsheet functions are typically, there are two main components. The first is the name of the function. So for example, if you want to compute future value, uh, you will use the future value function. And the name of the function in this case is FV. Um, and also if for each function there are input variables. So you need to provide these input variables for the spreadsheet to do the calculation for you. Uh, the two main spreadsheet software that we'll use in this uh, video include Google and also Excel. Uh, this is a Google example. Uh, he, he, these are the input variables. So these are the input variable that you need in order to compute uh, the future value, so FV. So if you put in this input variable, you will get uh, the uh, Google sheet will compute the future value for you. Another popular software is um, Excel. Um, Excel actually have the exact same time value of money function as Google Sheet, and the name of the functions are the same. So to compute future value, both Excel and uh, Google will use FV as the name of the function. However, the name of the input variables are different. Um, the names for Google Sheet tend to be more descriptive, so instead of number of periods, um, that seems pretty easy to understand. Whereas in Excel, the names are more abbreviated, so M per stands for number of periods, and payment amount in Excel will be PMT, um, and whether or not uh, it's beginning or ending, you use the word type. Uh, we are going to go over each function and what the uh, corresponding input vari variables are in details. So here are the variable, here are the functions that we will use to compute different um, values for time value of money. So FV function will give you the future value. Uh, we are not going to include all the input variables when we use the name of the function. We'll see in a minute, once you enter the name of the function, uh, the software will help you with what the input variables are. So it's important to know the name of the function first and foremost. So FV stands for future value. Uh, PV is present value, and rate is to compute the rate of return over the investment horizon. Uh, the time, so even in uh, Google, we will use uh, Amper, that's the name of the function. So uh, make sure that you know the difference between the name of the function and the name of the input variable. So here are the name of the functions to find time. So this is the overall time horizon of an investment or a loan. And then if you want to find the annuity payment, meaning the monthly or the weekly or the uh, payment amount, the name of the function is PMT. Next, we're going to take a look at the input variable name. So again, this, is, uh, this explains what the software expects you to put in as the input so that the functions will give you the correct answer. Uh, the first is the rate of return. So uh, this is the interest rate. Um, it's important to match the right time unit. So what that means is uh, make sure that if you are using a month, if you are computing monthly payment, 
then you want to put in the interest rate per month um, and not the annual interest rate. So this can be a little bit tricky until you get used to the convention. Another is time unit. So once again, uh, the right time unit. So for example, if this is per month, then you need to enter this in months. So just need to make sure that you, you match um, all the units. So for example, if you, bought, uh, if you take out a car loan and the interest rate is 6% per year, but you make monthly payments. So what that means is the 6% per year have to be converted into 0.5% uh, per month. So half a percent per month. So that's, uh, that's what we mean by number of, uh, the time unit. Uh, the same thing is true, uh, in computing, uh, in the time unit. So if this is a four year loan because you are making monthly payment, then you have to convert the four years into 48 months. So however often you need to make payment is how much you need, uh, is the time unit that you're working with. The reason for that is because, of course, when you're computing the payment amount, you want that to be per month. You're looking at your monthly payment. So again, this has to be the same time unit. The next two variables are relatively straightforward. Present value stands for present value. And again, the notation here, um, the first notation you see is Excel. And the second notation is Google Sheets. So in Excel, the variable name would be PMT. And in Google, that will be payment amount. Uh, present value in Excel, it will be represented as PV. And in Google, you'll be represented as present value. Uh, similar for future value, in Excel, it is FV. And in Google, it will be future value. The last um, very input variable is the type of annuity. We talk about um, there is an annuity deal and there is an ordinary annuity. Ordinary annuity is when all the payments occur at the end, and annuity is deal is when payment occurs at the beginning of each period. Um, so in Excel, the input variable name for the annuity type is type. And in uh, Google, it says ending or beginning. So it's asking you whether or not the annuity uh, uh, payment occur at the end of each period or at the beginning of each period. So uh, if we're working with ordinary annuity, so that's more common, you can omit it. And you see the square bracket in the function, that means this is a variable that if you omit, there is a default. So if you don't put in a number, you, you don't put in zero or one, you assume that it is an ordinary annuity. If you use the number one in this argument, uh, then you assume that it is an annuity deal. Since most problems are ordinary annuity, it is considered as a default in Excel and also in Google. So uh, both of them will make that assumption. Finally, a very important to, uh, thing to take into account is the cash flow assumption. Uh, the software assumes that some cash flows are inflows and some cash flows are outflows, and you need to make that explicit. So if you want a cash flow to be considered an outflow, meaning money coming out from your pocket, you need to put it as a negative number. We're going to go over how to apply a uh, spreadsheet to solve time value of money in two ways. Uh, one, uh, in the next video, I'm going to go over step by step how to create your own model. I have also created a template that you can download and use the template to solve this problem uh, without having to create your own model. Uh, if the link does not work, uh, here is the detailed address uh, for the template. I know there's a lot of information in here. I encourage you to maybe even print out or write down the function name and the input variable name. Uh, and then when the, in the next video, we're going to go over some actual problems to practice. See you soon.